Resignation watch. <laughs> Resignation watch. It's like looking for a rare animal in the wild. It's like, is, is, is that is that the is that the Teresa May? That is the Teresa May. She's finally That's what they're expecting anyway. To give her resignation day. The last that I heard was that she was still gonna try to fight on, but now it seems like she's finally coming out here to give that letter. Because keep in mind, she was supposed to um, put her bill up, and they pushed the withdrawal bill to June. Yeah. Theresa May may throw a curveball to these people out here who are thinking that she's going to resign. I'm looking at these newspaper headlines that are telling her to go. Brex, the BBC even had a little thing with Jeremy Corbyn saying, you've lost the authority to govern. <sighs> it's brutal. So let's join them in the rare resignation watch of a failed, utterly disgraced prime minister that took on a task that was far, far above her station to deliver. Welcome to the yeah. All right, so this is number 10. Downing Street, we're waiting. Prime Minister is gonna come out here at some point. I don't know if she's going to dance. That will seem somewhat inappropriate if she does. Um, look at the guy, look at the cop, look at the cop. Oh, I love their cops. I love their cops. And you won't get shot. Isn't that rare? Isn't that rare? Beaten, yes. Beaten, yes. Yeah, they will rough you up. Um, but not shot, which, you know, I don't want to take a beating, but I definitely don't want to be shot. So, isn't this exciting? A woman, like, you must understand the situation here. The Prime Minister, people have been yelling at her to go. One guy yelled at her after the results of the uh, local elections. They lost like 1,300 seats. The guy said, just go! Just go! He said in a British way that he was exasperated. Um, not just that, even in... in, in what the fuck was that? <laughs> that woman tried to attack me, man. Um, even in, in PMQs, same thing. People would ask her, when are you leaving? When are you leaving? There were a list of people trying to get in contact with the Prime Minister to arrange meetings to talk to her to see when she is planning on leaving. She would not take any of those meetings because she knew exactly what those people wanted. When she gave that speech and she says, you know, I think we're in for a great future. By the time she even got to that point, that thing was dead on arrival. There's a certain degree of delusional thinking to believe that what she was pitching was going to be something that was going to be amenable to both sides. Labor doesn't want to accept it regardless. Just saying. And Jeremy Corbyn makes a really good point on that. I mean, granted, he doesn't want to accept it for political reasons, but also he makes a good point. Why would a labor leader accept a deal from a prime minister that is not going to be there in a few weeks? Why? The person who's coming in behind her is going to rip that up. It's been tarnished by Theresa May's name. Yes! Yes! Dance and shake for me. Dance and shake. Hi, Theresa. Ever since I first stepped through the door behind me as prime minister, I have striven to make the United Kingdom a country that works not just for the ability to result of the EU referendum. Back in 2016, we gave the British people a choice. Against all predictions, the British people voted to leave the European Union. I feel as certain today as I did three years ago that in a democracy, if you give people a choice, you have a duty to implement what they decide. I have done my best to do that. I negotiated the terms of our exit and a new relationship with our closest neighbours that protects jobs, our security and our union. I have done everything I can to convince MPs to back that deal. Sadly, I have not been able to do so. I tried three times. I believe it was right to persevere 
even when the odds against success seemed high. But it is now clear to me that it is in the best interests of the country for a new Prime Minister to lead that effort. So I am today announcing that I will resign as leader of the Conservative and Unionist Party on Friday the 7th of June, so that a successor can be chosen. I've agreed with the party chairman and with the chairman of the 1922 committee that the process for electing a new leader should begin in the following week. I have kept Her Majesty the Queen fully informed of my intentions and I will continue to serve as her Prime Minister until the process has concluded. It is and will always remain a matter of deep regret to me that I have not been able to deliver Brexit. It will be for my successor to seek a way forward that honours the result of the referendum. To succeed, he or she will have to find consensus in Parliament where I have not. Such a consensus can only be reached if those on all sides of the debate are willing to compromise. For many years, the great humanitarian Sir Nicholas Winton, who saved the lives of hundreds of children by arranging their evacuation from Nazi-occupied Czechoslovakia through the Kinder transport, was my constituent in Maidenhead. At another time of political controversy, a few years before his death, he took me to one side at a local event and gave me a piece of advice. He said, never forget that compromise is not a dirty word. Life depends on compromise. He was right. As we strive to find the compromises we need in our politics, whether to deliver Brexit or to restore devolved government in Northern Ireland, we must remember what brought us here. Because the referendum was not just a call to leave the EU, but for profound change in our country. A call to make the United Kingdom a country that truly works for everyone. I'm proud of the progress we have made over the last three years. We have completed the work that David Cameron and George Osborne started. The deficit is almost eliminated. Our national debt is falling and we are bringing an end to austerity. My focus has been on ensuring that the good jobs of the future will be created in communities across the whole country, not just in London and the South East, through our modern industrial strategy. We have helped more people than ever enjoy the security of a job. We are building homes, buyers onto the housing ladder, so young people can enjoy the opportunities their parents did. And we are protecting the environment, eliminating plastic waste, tackling climate change, and improving air quality. This is what a decent, moderate, and patriotic conservative government on the common ground of British politics can achieve, even as we tackle the biggest peacetime challenge any government has faced. I know that the Conservative Party can renew itself in the years ahead, that we can deliver Brexit and serve the British people with policies inspired by our values. Security, freedom and opportunity, those values have guided me throughout my career. But the unique privilege of this office is to use this platform to give a voice to the voiceless, to fight the burning injustices that still scar our society. That is why I put proper funding for mental health at the heart of our NHS long-term plan. It's why I'm ending the postcode lottery for survivors of domestic abuse. It is why the race disparity audit and gender pay reporting are shining a light on equality. And it is why I set up the independent public inquiry into the tragedy at Grenfell Tower to search for the truth so nothing like it can ever happen again. And so the people who lost their lives that night are never forgotten. Because this country is a union, not just a family of four nations, but a union of people, all of us. Whatever our background, the color of our skin or who we love, we stand together and together we have a great future. Our politics may be under strain, but there is so much that is good about this country. So much to be proud of, so much to be optimistic about. 
I will shortly leave the job that it has been the honour of my life to hold. The second female Prime Minister, but certainly not the last. I do so with no ill will, but with enormous and enduring gratitude to have had the opportunity to serve the country I love. Okay, I'm going to be honest, I didn't think she was going to cry for real. Now I feel bad. 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 I feel horrible. Oh, that hurt. That's brutal, man. Because that means that the entire speech, she was holding that shit in. Just at the last minute. The sure of the country I love. That's fucking brutal. Yeah, I feel bad. I feel horrible now. I know... I, I know all of the, the crummy stuff that Therese May was doing in that office and making people's lives miserable and everything else. But I don't like to see her cry. That's that's rough, man. Let's see that again. When, you know, Jeremy Corbyn has said something to him, he's like, why don't you just go, man? Like, he just freaks out, gets all emotional and, and, and you know, hysterical. Stressful? And what she was saying there was nonsense. Compromise? Compromise? Theresa May didn't compromise until it became extraordinarily clear that she was busted, that nobody would get her deal. At that point now, she didn't want to, you know, own it. And so she's, you know, trying to get labor to sign on to, the, you know, this kind of death cult of sorts. Um, yeah, labor didn't want to sign on to that. And yeah, you were toxic at that point. And no, you had no capacity to deliver any deal. And no, you didn't compromise until the very end where you were at your ropes left. Compromise. Get out of here. And by the way, lowering the deficit is not the end all and be all. How many soup kitchens, food kitchens, um, food um, things? Like, I guess my point is if your country is experiencing poverty where you're making people's lives harder, the fact that you're lowering the deficit is matters less. That's not the end all be all. And anyone that watched Prime Minister Questions know that the Reese May has this way of arguing of, well, we put money into this. That's all we could afford. But that's not enough. Yeah, but that's all we could afford. Yes, we had to give those tax cuts because those billionaires needed more, mo more money. Yeah, man, this is brutal. This is brutal. I'm going to end this. Um, I, I, I just thought it was interesting. Theresa May watch. This will be the only time you get to see this because she will be out June 7th. And if I'm not mistaken, that's when her bill is supposed to go up for a vote and it's supposed to be voted down. Um... But compromise? Get out of here. Get out of here. And yeah, tax breaks and then austerity for everybody else. And it's like, oh, we can't afford to open schools on Saturday, on Fridays. What? What? You can't afford to open schools on Fridays? You just gave tax cuts. How are you doing both? How are you effectively saying we don't have enough revenue to keep our schools open of vital interest to our kids? Or to put, you know, cops on the street. Or to invest in the NHS. You can go down the list. And in all of these cases, she always acts like, oh, I invested so much into this or that. Um, you, this notion of tax cuts, why you simultaneously disallow kids to go to school on Fridays is abysmal. Like, I don't even live in Britain. And I was apoplectic listening to that. We need more billionaires, not schools. All right, uh, in this, if you guys enjoy the content, please feel free to share, like, subscribe. And of course, you guys can always support the PayPal or Patreon. First, last, thank you. Oh, thank you, man. I appreciate it. Um, I didn't go with my baby. Did I, uh, Gordon Mack must be happy. Yeah, he's going to be happy because he's been waiting for her to leave. Yes, he is. Um, Aqua Dark, you missed it. Yeah, you just missed it. You just missed it by about like maybe five minutes. Theresa May came out, gave her last speech, wept at the end, and hurried back to the room. Painful. Painful, painful, painful. Off to a footnote. Boris Johnson for the win. That's who, I, man. You know, the funny part is, if you remember, Boris Johnson had the opportunity to try to run the first time around. 
and he didn't take it. He passed it up. So it looks like he is going to jump on that opportunity at this time. They're talking about him, Dominic Rav. Um, I can't think of the other woman's name. But there will be a few people for a leadership contest. So stay tuned. I'll be following it. Thanks, all. See you in a few.